Hello guys, welcome to Hats Foot Economics. Hats Hats Foot, and it's your girl Connie. And if you haven't been here before, you're gonna love it. Please like and subscribe, and be sure to visit my sister page, The Laws of the Enchantress. I got two Facebook pages, one for Hats Foot Economics, Hats Hats Foot Life, and also, I guess three, <laughs> my new page, The Laws of Enchantress. So I want to go back into economics. I want to go back into why marriage is imperative. So I want to go back to this style so you guys can see the facts for yourself. So this is a nice article by Huffington Post. I'm sure we're all familiar with Huffington Post, a very reputable newspaper. And right here you can see it says marriage is for smart people now. So what does that mean? You know, I like to separate fact from fiction. We all have our opinions. We all have our perspectives. But what is the actual facts behind marriage? Is marriage really imperative? And if so, what does that mean to black women who are over 70% not married? Whether they're living with their boyfriend, living with their you know significant other, what does it mean economically? What is the impact? All right. You hear so many opinions about marriage. Which one is the right one? Which one's the facts? The facts, the facts, the facts. Like I said, anyone can do what I'm doing, but nobody else is doing it. No one else is doing it. So I'm bringing you the facts. I'm bringing you the receipts. All the links, as usual, will be in the description box so you can look it up for yourself. So let's get started. It says marriage is struggling in America. The divorce rate hovers around like 50% and fewer people are getting hitched than ever before. Um, the best marriages have never been better. Okay, so they're talking about marriages are breaking down, but what's happening? What's happening? So let's just say this. Once upon a time... The article basically says, when we look for a spouse, you know, we had a checklist. It's pretty, short, strong, smart, conveniently located, things like that. But the criteria for a partner has changed drastically. Now husbands or wives are expected by their spouses to help them seek fulfillment in all areas of life. So spouses, we think, must not only adore us, but also drive us forward in positive directions. Weighted down by lofty expectations, take a toll and may account for why the divorce rate in America, it's currently 50%. All right. So the divorce rate is 50%, but what they don't tell you is the demographics amongst that 50%. So it's really important before you go spitting out 50% of people get divorced. Not exactly. 50% of poorer, less advantaged, economically challenged, and mostly heavy minority demographics tend to make up a massive chunk of those who are getting divorced. So that's something you should know. In that 50% demographic, most of those people are not upper middle class. The middle class, most of those people are lower and working class. All right? So think about that. Sometimes a loving marriage is not even adequate. People demand a lot more. People need growth. People need fulfillment. So the thing is that when you look at this article, is marriage for smart, rich people. The reason why they say and smart and rich is because people are getting married for economical and smart reasons. Not saying you can't love your spouse, but sometimes people love for the wrong reasons. A lot of times people who are in poverty such situations, they both have no way to climb the economic ladder, which is going to be the fastest way to fast track yourself to divorce. Meaning that if your husband doesn't have an education, you don't have an education, you have that, he has that, you got bad credit, he got bad credit, it's not going to be a pretty picture. It's probably easy to predict. But people don't like to talk about these uncomfortable situations. People don't like to talk about financial and finances and credit score, which is paramount. Money is probably the number one reason why marriages fail. And people who are poor and economically challenged tend to be the ones who do not want to talk about money. All right. So that's what you got to realize. Smart and rich people are more successful because they feel much more comfortable talking about money because they got money because they got money. So it's, it's, it's not, it's not rocket science. So we're going to go to a next article. All right. And this article is by the New York times. Pretty sure you guys are familiar with the New York times. Let me just put this down here. So you can see here it says marriage is for rich people. They just went straight to the chase. So the rich, it says here, are different from me and you. They're more likely to get married and stay married. A new report by Michael Greenstone and Adam Looney of the Hamilton Project looked at the decline in marriage rates for over the last 50 years and found a strong connection to income. I want to pause right there 
I don't think it's a strong connection. I think it is the actual reason. There's no other reason. Dwindling marriage rates are concentrated among the poor. The very people whose living standards would actually be improved by having a second household income. The trend is especially pronounced around men. For about 40 years now, 9 out of 10 American men between the ages of 30 and 50 were married. And the most highly paid men were just slightly more likely to wed than those who got paid the least. Since then, earning for men in the top 10th of income distribution have risen and their marriage rates have fallen slightly from 95% to 83%. So the rich affluent men are still getting married moderately. They fell about 5%. For, further, for men further down the income ladder, however, both incomes and the chances of, of bliss have plummeted. So you can see right here, change in the share of men by, by earnings, you can see it's dropping. And they went all the way from 1907 to 2011. But what they're not showing you in the Hamilton report is the actual racial demographics. Black men, black women make up a huge chunk of people who are not getting married. And I say this, marriage is a choice. They shouldn't put a gun to your head. But what I want to say is, if you're making that choice, don't mimic the debt of a marriage life. What do I mean by mimic the debt? Don't mimic buying a house with a boyfriend. Don't have kids with a boyfriend. Don't take on any type of economic burden with a boyfriend that mimics marriage because these relationships do end and then becomes a super burden. What do I mean by super burden? A super burden is a burden that's meant to be carried by a two income or a superior income household. What's a superior income household? Um, either one person working, the two, you know, one person working that equals the income of a two person household. So you can have a stay at home mom with a dad who has a very heavy and very lucrative of salary or two people working. So if you do that in a non-legal, non-binding, just regular casual commitment relationship uh, and you break up, one of you, most likely the women, will occur and carry a super debt, like having a child, being a single mom, taking care of a mortgage, a car note, things that originally, in essence, you would take on with either a super salary, one of you, only, one of you commanding a big salary, or either two of you. OK, so it's really important for you guys to understand these economics. And that's why it's so important to have a hold on this. That's why it's really important to have a dynamic on this. That's why it's not fair to say marriage is marriage that when we have the science, statistics and research and data that shows exactly why most marriages fail. It's not a, we don't have to guess. We're sending satellites into orbit. We're sending satellites into the next galaxy. We're talking about going to Mars. It's not rocket science as to why humans break up. What's wrong with it is that it's not romantic. It's not cute. It's not picturesque to talk about these things before you enter a marriage. And the more you avoid it, the more your chances of having a rocky and divorced marriage. But if you're willing to actually go through this tough part and make sure you and your spouse have a plan, make sure you and your spouse talk about how you're going to make money, how you're going to master economics, how you're going to take care of generational wealth. Get this stuff out the way before walking down the aisle. All right. So listen to this. The poorest men have even sharper financial romantic declines. Men in the bottom quartile of um, earnings have had a wage cut of 60 percent. So what I want to say is something kind of mean. If you're not accruing a certain amount of wealth, you should not be getting married. You should not be taking on more burden. You should not be having children and having all this. You should be focusing on how to become economically stable before taking on a potential debt. All right. So this is really important to know. So marriage can actually be an incentive to getting yourself on the track of being financially free or at least economically sound. The more you do things separately, the higher your chances for divorce. All right. Here's another article. Can you afford to get married in the U.S.? It's becoming an increasingly privilege of the rich. All right. So th this is this is very scary. All right. It it's very scary. So the marriage has become a status increasingly the priv pres perseverance of the wealthy educated. Today, 26 percent of poor, 39 percent of working class and 56 percent of middle and upper class adults aged 18 to 55 are married, according to the research by Opportunity America and the American Enterprise Institute. This compares with 51 percent to 57 percent and 65 percent, respectively, in 1990. Education plays a part, too. Those without a college degree are less likely to have a spouse, Anal analysts by the Pew Research Center shows. So, guys, it's not rocket science, okay? It's not rocket science. 
It, it's just not. You have to figure out an entrepreneurial way for steadiness. You have to figure out a way to gain money in economics. And what's crazy is that most people of color, especially in the black community, don't realize that striving for marriage, aiming to be able to take care of a family, especially for men, is one of the most biggest driving forces of not being caught up in poverty. When you only strive to take care of yourself, when you only strive to maintain yourself, when you only strive to be about me, 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 especially as a male, there's no real driving incentive. The classic incentive for men to make more money was because potentially, prospectively, you knew as a male that at some point in time, you might take care of a wife and you just might take care of a child. So you knew you had to be eh, a bit more aggressive. But now, a lot of younger, modern men, especially in the black community, especially when you look at demographics, don't really have that train of thought. And probably in their mind, they feel liberated. But at the end of the day, it's kind of like a stab yourself in the back. Because if you're not trying to be a provider, if you're not trying to be the head of a household, just, just subconsciously, you're not going to be that hyper aggressive in getting that big salary. So right here, you can see. OK, marriage rates also vary widely by race and ethnicity, although Pew points out the gap between whites and blacks have remained fairly consistent <coughs> in 2015. 54% of white adults were married, compared to 61% of Asian Americans, 46% of Hispanic Americans. And in 2015, only 30% of all African Americans were married. That's really, really bad. Falling marriage rates are concerning. Marriage is the way Americans do long-term stable relationships. Children do best in stable families. Americans don't tend to cohabit for very long. They break up or they marry. So when you have people telling black women that marriage is an option, when you have people telling black women that marriage is not necessary. When you have black women telling other black women that you don't have to get married, what are you talking about? You are not part of the patriarchy. You have a marriage rate of 30% or lower. To complain about patriarchy, to whine about patriarchy, to be upset about patriarchy, you need to have men who are actually trying to marry you. That is not what statistics say. So it's kind of comical for black women to complain about patriarch when you're not amongst it. Patriarch means you have a male-led head of household and or community. You do not have it. It's kind of like the fox and the sour grapes. So what do you do? You got to open up your options. You got to make marriage a priority. You got to make sure marriage is a core center because everything revolves around economics and economics revolves around marriage. So it's highly imperative. And I truly believe if you have these logical, intelligent conversations with any man prior to getting married, it's going to either make or break the relationship. But you don't want a guy who doesn't understand the economics and, and, and fundamentals of finances are essential to a healthy marriage. Marriage has a very high cultural value in the U.S., even today, when it's not necessary to marry. Getting married is a sign of a successful life. You know, and, and you have a lot of super liberal, I call it super sane, Goku, extreme feminists, and they're telling you, you don't need marriage, don't get married, blah, blah, blah. But behind your back, they're having the biggest, most lavish, most, most expensive weddings because it's not people of color. And marriage is a multi-billion dollar industry. I'm going to say it again. It's a multi-billion dollar industry. And the people in those industries are making a lot of money because it's a very concentrated demographic who tends to get married. It, it's, it's a serious thing. It's a serious thing. Let's go to the next article. Is marriage only for the rich and well-educated? Do you guys see a pattern around here? Do you see a pattern? Okay, I, and this is from The Atlantic with an article that's based on the New York Times, very reputable, you know, newspapers. And it's telling you that there's something wrong. It's telling you something is wrong. They, they, glorify, they glorify being a single mother. They glorify and twist around statistics. 
it, it doesn't it doesn't seem to to fit what they were trying to push that marriage is bad for women and marriage is bad for this probably that's what the mainstream media wants you to believe but it's not true and it's really wrong to distort the truth and you know it's 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 a liberal versus conservative facts versus fiction you know these are five reasons why marriage is so important Marriage is the beginning of the family and a lifelong commitment, oneness, purity, okay? It, it helps to bring moral balance, moral balance, parenting, and love. Not saying that marriage is a magic wand, but if you have these decent good principles in your life, it's going to help. It's going to help. You can't, marriage is not going to transform a bad relationship, but marriage will elevate a good relationship. And here's World Finance. This is an economic newspaper, all right? Very well known for richer or for poor, the economics of marriage. The economics of marriage, okay? The economics of marriage cashing in. Marriage increases your net worth. What's mine is yours. Marriage is a great way to hand down generational wealth. Marriage is a good thing for mental health and stability. Marriage helps to give you bonuses. Divorce faces a reduction in wealth. If you're wealthier, if you're economically sound. So you, you, you really have to look at the decline of marriage and who it's declining amongst. It's not declining amongst the, 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 the rich. This is another article, The Mystery of Billionaires and Long Marriages. So you would think of marriage is horrible. People that are billionaires and millionaires who have access to mostly gorgeous women. You gotta remember, most billionaires are men. But why is it that billionaire people? Again, economics helps to make the marriage grounded. Economics helps to make the marriage stable. I'm not saying you gotta be a millionaire or a billionaire, but there's some tips you can take if you plan to or desire to, or even if you're currently married. So that's what we're saying. Bill Gates, Steve Jobs, Sir Richard Branson. You don't have to have money like them. But you, but you, you can look at them. You know, if you go down the Forbes billionaires list, a weird pattern starts to emerge. More than 40% of all marriages end in divorce, but among the extremely successful, whom one might have expected to be extremely unsuccessful in wedlock, the reverse is, 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 is the case. So you would think if you're extremely wealthy, you would have six, seven, eight wives. Carlos Slim, number two on the Forbes list, after Gates, who's also been married a long time, was married to the same woman for 32 years until she died. Warren Buffett was married to his first wife for 52 years until she died. You know, further down the list, you have, you know, it's, it's crazy. Jeff Bezos and Michael Dell have been married for more than 20 years apiece. Eric Schmidt, for more than 30 years, Ray Dalio at Bridgewater is up to 40 years, while Phil Knight of Nike is heading to his golden wedding. And now the, the article's like, yo, how can such stability happen? These billionaires are all living the grip of rip-roaring obsession. And the guy says, you know, I don't know. But what I'm trying to tell you is that money is a main reason for breaking up. So if you're interested in getting married, you might want to have this conversation. If you're interested in, in, in having a lasting marriage, this is something that you need to talk about. Who's going to be working? Who's bringing in the income? What are you going to be living on? Do you have the same social ambition, economic ambition, financial ambition? What do you see yourself five years? You need to start having these conversations. It doesn't have to be rocket science, who gets married, who stay married, and who doesn't.
It doesn't have to be a secret, guys. And here's another article. Who gets married today? The rich and educated. So I don't know about you guys. All right? But I want black women to be rich. I want black women to be married to educated men. And the reason why I'm trying to tell you you need a balance is because somebody who's successful needs support, whether it's man or a woman, to reach a certain height of astronomical success. And gender roles are paramount. That's why you don't see Bill Gates marrying a Mrs. Bill Gates in the sense where he's looking for someone of his economic and, and, and financial success. That's not what they want. It's a balance. There's a balance there. And we can do this. We can definitely do this. We can do this. And as black women, we need to make a choice. If you don't want to get married, that's fine. But just know that you're putting yourself at a massive risk for vulnerability, at a massive risk for being lonely, and a massive risk for not being able to pass down generational wealth, and a massive risk for not being able to leave a legacy that once you're gone, that's it. That's, it's like you never were here. Just know the statistics, know the research and the data, and make up your mind based on the facts. Not somebody's bitterness, not somebody's ridiculousness, not women who are married and tell you not to get married. It doesn't make absolutely no sense. Like I said, I'm all about black women's happiness. If you want to be happy with a black man, a white man, a Chinese man, an Arab man, an Asian, I do not care. India, Pakistan, Bangladesh, Nigeria, Ghana, I don't care. All I care about is that you are making the right choice that's going to enhance your life, enhance your happiness, give you mental stability, give you economic stability and financial freedom. That you are there and you're building and you're evolving and you're growing. Nobody is perfect. Look at the statistics. Have your prerequisites. Have your core list of what is paramount for you in your relationships. You do not have to become a statistic. It's not rocket science. No one's born rich except for blue bloods. And most billionaires like Amazon, Jeff Bezos, like Mark Zuckerberg for Facebook, like Bill Gates for Microsoft, like Steve Jobs for Apple, all some of the most famous billionaires who have lived or are living or whoever will live. And they weren't born rich. You know what they had? Great spouses, Axe Warren Buffett. Great spouses, ask Dell, and they balance each other out. It's the secret to prosperity. And the reason why you see so many black women are suffering because you got a demographic who are 72% unwed with children and only 30% or less out of the entire population of marriage. That's economic doom. And that's why it's so hard for us to get proper health care. That's why it's so hard for us to get politicians and legislations and laws that helps to support and alleviate and uplift black women. We have the power right now with social media to uplift, promote, evolve, revolve, and solve. But too many of us use social media just to get clicks, just to collect a little check, just to get a couple of likes, just to amp up black women, get us angry. And we're not using that energy to promote and make ourselves get better, be better, feel better, and advance. And we can definitely do it. People are doing it. I'm doing it. So hopefully you'll listen to this and you will tell your daughters, you will tell your cousins, you will tell your sisters, you will tell your sons, you will tell your brothers, you will tell any black people that this is not a joke. Economic empowerment, financial freedom, generational wealth, legacy building. It's the essence of a community, essence of life. And if we continue to turn our back and waste our time and keep thinking we can just keep flipping the bottles of the sand of time, we're running out of time. Soon we're going to get stuck in quicksand and we're not going to be able to get out. But we don't, it doesn't have to be that way. We can advance. We can do better. As long as we know the truths. And we're putting our time and energy and passion into truly advancing ourselves as individuals. We can do it. Every black woman listening to this video can do it. It's not that hard to make good choices. All right, guys. <laughs> I hope you like this little video. I'll put the articles in the description box as usual. And if you haven't done so, please like and subscribe. That's this book. And I'll see you guys later.